Good morning, all. I am Dr. Indira Naidu, the head of South Africa of World Education Events. I am proud to have brought to my country, South Africa, the India and Abroad Model United Nations Debate. I'd like to introduce to you the South African coordinator of the IA Moon of South Africa, Mrs. Karishma Kandila. And then I'd like to introduce to you our chairperson of the day, Mr. Gopal Krishna Patak, who is the head of World Education Events International. Not forgetting our delegates of the day of the various countries who will be introduced by Karishma Naidu. Everything of the best to all our candidates. Thank you. God bless you all. I love you all. Good day to one and all. I am Karishma Kandilal. Today, I would like to start off by thanking Mr. Patak, who has availed this opportunity to the learners of Dr. Indira Naidu's Early Learning Academy. I will go around introducing to you the various delegates that we have. First, we have the delegates of Brazil. Jasmine. Then we have the delegate of Japan, Saishna. The delegate of New Zealand, Gabrielle. The delegate of Finland, Shreya. The delegate of China, Priya. The delegate of South Africa, Joshua. The delegate of Greece, Cassie Marie. And the delegate of Sweden, Aria. Let me commence with the prayer. Uh, can we have silence from everyone? Dear Lord, as we gather before you today to participate in this academic contest, make us aware that we do this competition not for our own glory, but to glorify your name. Grant your wisdom so that the delegates will value the friendship and cooperation that happens today more than the glory of winning. Bestow your glory and generosity and love to all of us present today. Whatever we accomplish in this challenge, we offer to you. Amen. I would like to hand over to our Honorable Chair, Mr. Patak, to proceed with the day's program. Thanks so much, Dr. Indifran Naidu and Karisma Ma'am. Well, a very good morning to one and all present here. Thank you for joining IAMUN 2021 South African chapter. This COVID-19 pandemic created a lot of challenges especially if I talk about education system. So at such a time, understanding these challenges is to keep solving them for the battle of crisis management in education. I really appreciate Dr. Indra Naidu Early Learning Academy to bring IAMUN conference in South Africa for students. The delegates of UNEP, your decisions and resolution will set the global agenda, notably ahead the UN Climate Action Summit. After this conference, IAMUN team will forward your resolution to the United Nations. Today, as a member of IAMUN conference, we are pleasing to promote the sustainable development environment system by encouraging different practices that we are going to discuss today. Delegates, we'll start our session with roll call. So, Delegate of Japan. Present and voting. Thank you, Delegate of Japan. Delegate of Finland. Present and voting. Thank you so much, Delegate. Delegate of South Africa. Present and voting. Delegate of China. Present and voting. Thank you so much, Delegate. Delegate of Brazil. Present and voting. Thank you so much, Delegate. Delegate of Greece. Present and voting. Thank you so much, Delegate. Delegate of Sudan. Present and voting. Thank you so much, Delegate. Thank you so much, Delegate. Now, is there any point or motion on the floor? Delegate, you're having two options. Simply, you can raise your hand virtually, as well as, you you know, just to avoid confusion, you can also write in chat box so that you will be recognized. Delegate of Japan, you're recognized. What point or motion you're having? Delegates of Japan would like to raise a motion to set the agenda on environmental issues. Thank you so much, Delegate. Is there any other delegate who would like to raise motion, please? Okay, is there any other delegate who would like to raise any motion? No? 
So motion raised by delegate of Japan to set the agenda. Those who are in favor, please respond in chat box. Thanks so much, delegate. So I can see uh, there's no objection. Is there any second? Please, please write down there in chat box. So saying no objection, motion clearly passes. Congratulations, delegate of Japan. Your motion clearly passes. Thanks so much. So we we adopted the agenda today's agenda. Now we'll move towards the next. On is there any other point or motion on the floor? Please raise your hand, delegate, or you may maybe pause, but you can respond in chat box also. Yes, delegate. would like to raise a motion to set the speaker's list. Yes. And um, total time, can you just tell me delegate? 20 minutes. Okay, and for delegate? 120 seconds. Okay, thanks so much delegate. Is there any other delegate who would like to raise the motion? Please feel free. Thanks so much delegate. The first motion was raised by delegate of Brazil for the speaker's list and the total time is 20 minutes. Paul Delegate, 120 seconds. Delegate, you need to respond in chat box now. So those who are in favor, please write down, or is there any second? They can also respond in the chat box. Delegate, motion is raised for the speaker's list. Those who are in favor, please write down, yes. And is there any second? They'll write no. Thanks so much, Delegate. Congratulations, Delegate of Brazil. The motion is actually passed. I can't see any objection, so we won't move towards the voting. Now, the speaker's list is open. Please, please uh, respond quickly those who want to be the part of it. The delegate of Japan and then delegate of Finland, delegate of New Zealand, you're recognized, okay. Any other delegate? Sweden, you're recognized, okay. Any other delegate who would like to be the part of South Africa? Just write down in chat box uh, your country. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the chance to be the part of it. You need to write down your country's name in the chat box. So, so far I do have uh, six delegates and they want to be the part of uh, speaker's list. So, Delegate of Japan, you are recognized for the speaker's list. Please establish yourself now. Good day to our Honorable Chairman, Mr. Patak, and our coordinator, Mrs. Kandilal, and our esteemed delegates and guests. Japan is an island country in East Asia located in the Northwest Pacific Ocean. Japan's closest neighbors are Korea, Russia, and China. Japan has a population of 126 million people. Japan faces six key environmental issues waste management effects of global warming diminishing of coral reef radioactive waste from nuclear power plants fishery and whaling and urban planning japan has put many laws in place to handle the environmental issues that are discussed above there are mainly two strategies to tackle climate change mitigation and adaptation mitigation refers to the following efforts on the reduction of industrial, household, and other greenhouse gases. Adaptation, on the other hand, refers Delegate, to- your time is about to finish. You can conclude. Refers to prevention of negative impacts being brought by climate change, such as sea level rise and drought. Thank you, delegates. Solutions of the above mentioned issues are possible. Thank you. Now, thanks so much, Delegate of Japan. Now, Delegate of Finland, you are recognized. Please establish yourself. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Finland is located in Northern Europe. Finland is one of the world's most northern and geographically remote countries and is subject to a severe climate. Nearly two thirds of Finland is blanketed by thick woodlands, making it the most densely forested country in Europe. Finland also forms a symbolic northern border between Western and Eastern Europe, dense wilderness and Russia to the east, the Gulf of Bithynia and Sweden to the west. Finland's main environmental issues are air and water pollution and the preservation of its wildlife. Finland's principal environmental agency is the Ministry of the Environment, established in 1983. Beginning in 1987, environmental protection boards were established for every community with more than 3,000 inhabitants. To preserve the shoreline profile, 30 to 50 percent of the shore suitable for recreational use may not be built on. Industrial pollutants from within the country and surrounding countries affect the purity of both the nation's air and water change. Finland has achieved on climate change. Finland has a Kyoto Protocol. Finland has the exact state level of proof that human included greenhouse gases cause global warming. Despite this, the most harmful use of heat is energy. Delegate, you can conclude. 
According to Prime Minister Sana Mardin's government's program in 2019, Finland will be climate neutral by 2035. The Climate Act is currently being amended and updated in a way that the target of climate neutrality by 2035 can be achieved. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Thanks so much, Delegate of Finland, Delegate of New Zealand. You are recognized. Good morning to Honourable Chair, fellow delegates, Dr. Nainu and Karishma Miam. Delegates of New Zealand is grateful for this opportunity to be a part of this conference and the chance to find suitable solutions for environmental issues. In New Zealand, pollution is an environmental issue with a number of measures being taken to reduce its severity. New Zealand is sometimes viewed as being clean and green, and this can be refuted due to pollution levels amongst other factors. New Zealand has a relatively low air pollution level, but some areas have high levels of plastic pollution. The waste problem in New Zealand projections show that the annual amount of waste disposal to landfills will almost double with 10 years in Auckland alone. This is a shocking increase from 1.6 million tonnes of waste to 3.2 million tonnes of waste that Aucklanders currently throw away. As a result, Auckland Council has adopted zero waste policy to progressively achieve zero waste status by 2000. And 40. Many other councils are following suit. Zero waste is therefore a key goal in all New Zealanders. New Zealand is aware that people are causing changes to the condition of our planet and the natural environment. The increase of non renewable resources, including oil, gas, minerals, and growing global population, and the degrading of the environment. The Global Footprint Network reports have put measures in place that humans are aware of the environmental problems and everyone should be responsible to live within their means. Plastic pollution is a big problem as much of it does not break down. About 8% of New Zealand's waste stream is weight by attributable to plastic. The reality is that New Zealand is aware that they only have one planet and we need to operate within delegate, the you can conclude now. Attention. Thank you so much, Delegate. Now, Delegate of Sudan, you're recognized. Please establish yourself. Quote, the environment is where we all meet, where we all have a mutual interest. It is the one thing all of us share, unquote. These are the words of Lady Bird Johnson. Honorable Chair, distinguished guests, esteemed delegates of the world. 50 years after hosting the first UN conference, which resulted in the establishment of the UN Environmental Programme, Sweden once again finds itself as the host to this milestone conference. Why, you may ask? Sweden's stance on its environmental policies and regulations, resulting in rankings of number two in the UN Sustainable Development Index, number five in the EPI, and ultimately number one with its goal of producing zero greenhouse gas emissions by the year 2045. Challenges of pollution and acid rain damage are amongst the few environmental problems faced by Sweden. However, these are addressed and managed by the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency. The Swedish agencies have ensured that only 1% of solid waste goes to landfill and 99% be recycled or used to produce biogas. The agencies have also ensured that renewable energy accounts for 48% of the Swedish energy production. The Swedish government is engaging with other countries through active citizen engagement and international solidarity to achieve its goal of zero greenhouse gas emission. The Swedish government will welcome any suggestions or advice from this committee to forge ahead with maintaining the progress to achieving its environmental goals. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Sweden. Delegate of South Africa, you are recognized. Good morning to Dr. Naidu, to Karishma Ma'am, Honorable Chair, and our fellow delegates. I am Joshua Simon Pillay, proudly representing South Africa. In 2016, South Africa had a problem with the plastic bags and straws. It would enter the marine life and our marine life species would eat it. Therefore, South Africa invented other ways to make these materials. Now, we can use paper bags and paper straws, which are recyclable. Okay, South Africa has an ISO 4001 certification or registered companies in South Africa needs to be certified with ISO 4001, which is an environmental certificate. This certificate is renewed on a yearly basis. In order to obtain a 4001 certificate, a recognized ISO auditor needs to conduce a yearly audit. When vehicles are on the road, they spread gases, which is carbon dioxide. That is checked by ISO 4001. This will ensure that our country meets with environmental standards. Thank you, our Honorable Chair, and Dr. Naidu and Krishna Ma'am. Thank you for sharing this time. Thanks so much, Delegate of South Africa. Uh, actually, you, you do have some time. It's okay, fine. No, no problem. Delegate of China, you're recognized. Please establish yourself. Thank you, Honorable Chair and esteemed delegates. The delegate of China would like to express the following environmental issues affecting China in its totality. Air and water pollution, waste management, cultural festivals, and its impact on biodiversity and habitat. 
China's alignment and policies established with our BRICS partners in tackling environmental issues and rehabilitation. To motion for WHO, which is the World Health Organization, to remove patent restrictions, allowing countries to locally develop medicines to counter the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, that is rapidly spreading worldwide. To put in place countermeasures regarding disposing of face masks, Millions of these masks are improperly discarded on a daily basis, making its way into drainage systems, rivers, dams, and the ocean, comparing air quality between lockdown and non-lockdown cities. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of China. Delegate of Brazil, you are recognized. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Brazil has one of the most diverse collections of flowers and animals on the planet impact on agricultural and social change in the country, threatening this biodiversity. Brazil's population has a stable growth rate at 0.83%. Waste to energy is one way to dispose of all combustible waste in which recycling alone is not economically usable. As the levels rise in the southern region of Brazil, citizens are urging officials to improve waste management systems. Due to its unique position as the only area of the world, air quality issues in Brazil relate more to river emissions. With about 40% of fuel used in Brazilian vehicles, air pollution differs from other nations where petrol or natural gas based fuels are used. Climate change in Brazil is mainly the climate of Brazil getting hotter and drier. The greenhouse effect of excess carbon dioxide and methane emissions makes the Amazon rainforest hotter and drier. Parts of the rainforest is becoming thicker. Greenhouse gas emissions by Brazil are almost 3% of the annual world total due to cutting down trees in the Amazon rainforest, which discharge more carbon dioxide in than it absorbs. Brazil has a general advance on environmental protection and sustainability. Brazil took the necessary steps to advance its climate change and commitments made. Brazil Delegate, now you can conclude. Brazil has reduced deforestation rates in the Amazon by more than 70%, the lowest deforestation rate in over 20 years. At this rate, Brazil's goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 38.9% is very low. Despite all these efforts to problem with deforestation and illegal logging, has remained a very serious issue in the country. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Brazil. Delegate of Greece, you're recognized. Good morning to my fellow delegates and our Honourable Chair, along with Karishma Ma'am and Dr. Naidu. Greece is mostly known for its collection of islands, beaches and complex ancient temples, a country of long impressive history and tradition. The birthplace of several mathematicians, artists and philosophers, and the cradle of democracy. Greece continues to face many environmental challenges, controlling air emissions from transport and from large power and industrial plants, reconciling water resource supply and demand, reducing effluent to water from municipal and agricultural sources, improving waste prevention and elimination. Greece generally has good environmental quality in some important areas where environmental quality was impaired. The situation has improved in recent years. Air quality in Athens, restoration of agricultural and historical heritage in others, example, bath in water quality. Decoration has been prevented. Regions is vulnerable to climate change, particularly due to drought and rising temperatures. To achieve this, the Greek region was divided into sub-regions, which are considered vulnerable to climate shocks, such as extreme temperatures like droughts and floods. Major environmental problems, some of the key issues in Greece are pollution, global warming, overpopulation, waste disposal, and loss of biodiversity. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Greece. So now Chira is exhausted with the present speakers list. Great. So, Delegate, is there a point or motion on the floor? You're having two options. Virtually, you can raise your hand or maybe you can respond in the chat box. You can simply write down your country's name so that you'll be recognized. Delegate of Sweden. Any other delegate? Uh, delegate of Japan. So Sweden followed by Japan, followed by New Zealand. OK, so rest of the delegate, uh, if you want, you can directly write down your country's name in the chat box so that you'll be recognized. Delegate of Japan, what point of motion do you have? Delegates of Japan would like to raise a motion to discuss air pollution. And delegate, what should be the total time and per delegate? Two minutes. Per each delegate, 18 minutes in total. Okay. 
Thanks so much, Delegate. Now, a Delegate of New Zealand, what po point or motion you're having? Delegates of New Zealand would like to raise a motion to discuss climate change. Total time, 18 minutes, and time per delegate, 120 seconds. 120 seconds? Okay, great. Thanks so much, Delegate of New Zealand. And delegate of Sweden, once again, you are recognized. Delegate of Sweden would like to raise a motion to discuss greenhouse gas emission. 18 minutes and 2 minutes per a delegate. Thanks so much, Delegate. Okay, so rest of the Delegate, if you'd like to raise a motion, you'll get the chance, so maybe later you can do that. Now, the motion raised by Delegate of Japan uh, for the year pollution on the total time is 80 minutes for Delegate 2 minutes. Delegate, those who are in favor, you need to write down in the chat box, or is there any second? They'll write no. In that situation, we'll go for the voting process. Seeing no objection, we won't move towards the voting process now. Congratulations, Delegate of Japan. The committee has adopted now this motion. Those who want to discuss air pollution now need to raise your hand virtually. Delegate, those who are interested to discuss the motion that is air pollution. Delegate of China. Delegate of China, you are recognized. Your time starts now. You can discuss about air pollution. Thank you, Honorable Chair and Fellow Delegates. China is responsible for more than 27% of total global gas emissions as of 2019. It is also the world's largest contributor to carbon dioxide, which is also known as CO2. This trend has risen for the past three years, and China is now producing 10.6 billion metric of CO2. China has also pledged to cut emissions under the Paris Agreement to reduce coal and invest in a renewable resource. China has been combating air pollution by pledging 35 billion trees across 12 provinces out of 23 provinces. China has also established 10 ecological projects from 1978. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate of Japan, you're recognized for this motion. Thank you, Honorable Chair and Fellow Delegates. Japan's air pollution has affected Japan drastically over the years. The main cause of air pollution is the burning of plastic. Japan uses plastic to produce the electricity because they burn it, the gases are released, and it causes air pollution. Thank you. Delegate, you're not audible. Maybe technical issue. So, Delegate of Japan will get once again a chance. Delegate of South Africa, you are recognized. Thank you to our honorable chair and fellow delegate. Today we will be discussing air pollution in South Africa. So how bad is our pollution in South Africa? The biggest killer is air pollution, which kills 7 million people per year. In South Africa, the World Health Organization estimates that air pollution kills at least 20,000 people a year. More than half of these deaths are caused by people burning wood and uh, oils for cooking and heating the areas in our homes. We have a major source of uh, air pollution, which is a PM, included domestic pollution, uh, pollution imitating from highly areas such as Sisunda, a town built amongst the coal fields of the Mpumalanga province of South Africa, and the largest source of point of the CO. We have three most polluted uh, cities in South Africa. We have George, Bavilia South, and Bedford View. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Delegate of South Africa. Delegate of uh, Finland, you're recognized. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. On the average, air quality is good in Finland and the local impact of air pollutants are minor. However, in difficult weather conditions in winter and summer, pollutant level in cities may rise to the same level as the central European cities of similar size. Thanks to air pollution control, air quality has improved significantly in Finland in recent decades. Emission into the air are still generated by energy production, industry and traffic, especially in urban areas. In addition, long distance transport brings air pollutants to Finland from other parts of the world, for example, in form of small from forest fires. The global effects of air pollution include the intensification of climate change, ozone layer depletion in the upper atmosphere and the chemicalization of the environment. Regional, regional impacts include the edification of soil and water as well as the increased ozone layer. 
Concentration in the trosophia, emissions are also determinal to human health and the surrounding area. For example, street dust and car exhaust most often cause symptoms in people suffering from respiratory tract disease. Air quality is monitored at dozens of measuring points in various locations in Finland. Real-time data produced by municipalities, industry, and at the Finnish Metrological Institute is available via the air quality portal. The Finnish Environment Institute, SYKE, is responsible for air pollutant reporting excluding greenhouse gas emissions, information on emissions and calculation methods, as well as related research and expertise available on the air pollutions. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate of Japan, would you like to raise a motion? Yeah, Delegate of Japan, you're recognized. Delegates of Japan would like to raise a motion for an unmonitored clock of 10 minutes. Okay, thanks so much, Delegate. Now, Delegate, those who are in favor, please write down yes in the chat box. Thanks so much, Delegate. We'll meet just after 10 minutes or break. Thanks so much, ma'am. Delegate of Sweden, you're recognized. Delegate of Sweden would like to raise a motion to resume formal session. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate, you can quickly respond in chat box. Seeing no objection, motion clearly passes. Thanks so much, Delegate of Sweden. Now, we are still having two more delegates for the previous motion and Delegate of Japan, you're recognized for air pollution. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. The history of air pollution in Japan goes back to the Manji government's police era of encouraging the rapid development of industry, where pollution was not considered. But the problem intensified from the period of high economic growth in 1950s. A large amount of oil and coal were burnt in order to provide the energy which was necessary for post-war reconstruction and to boost the national income. Pollution centered on sulfur oxide, SOx, which was becoming serious. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Japan. Now, Delegate of Brazil, you're recognized. Please establish yourself, Delegate. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. The larger urban area of Sao Paulo, the Rio de and the Zoya suffer from substantial ozone issues because of nitrogen oxide, which is a significant contributor to air pollution ozone formation. On the other hand, by the mid-1990s, heat levels in the air had decreased by approximately 70% after the widespread introduction of undated fuels reserved in 1975. Numbers of automobiles and levels of industrialization in Brazil cities highly influenced levels of air pollution in urban areas, which have an important impact on health for large population groups in major Brazilian urban areas. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Brazil. Natura is exhausted with the present list. Is there any other point or motion on the floor? In case your previous motion was not adopted, you're having a chance to raise your motion once again. Delegate of New Zealand, you are recognized what point of motion you're having. Delegate of New Zealand would like to raise a motion to discuss climate change. Thanks so much, Delegate, and total time? Total time, 16 minutes, and time per a Delegate, 2 minutes. Thanks so much, Delegate. Any other Delegate would like to raise motion? No? So, Delegate of New Zealand would like to raise a motion because about the climate change, and the total time is 16 minutes. Per Delegate is 120 seconds. Delegates, be ready now. Those who are in favor, please respond in chat box now. And is there any second? They'll respond no. Thanks so much, Delegate. Can't see any objection. Congratulations, Delegate of New Zealand. The motion is actually passed by the UNEP committee. Now, those who want to be the part of this moderated caucus need to raise your hand once again. Delegate of China followed by, is there any other delegate? Delegate of China followed by South Africa, followed by Finland. Any other delegate who wants to be the part of it? Uh, New Zealand. So, so far, uh, Finland and Greece. So, we do have delegate of China followed by South Africa, followed by Finland, New Zealand. 
Okay, great. So, and Greece. The rest of the delegate, if you want to be the part of it, you need to send me a message. You can write it down like you want to be the part of it. Okay, great. So, delegate of China, please establish yourself now. Thank you, Honorable Chair. The climate challenges that China is facing is mostly air pollution. Because of factory gases, the sun is hardly visible on the brightest day. In 2017, an estimated of 1.24 million people died because of the climate change. There is also an increase in carbon dioxide. China observed a temperature increase of 0.24 degrees per decade from 1951 to 2017. This has exceeded global rates. There is a sea level rise of 3.4 millimeters per year from 1980 to 2019 compared to the global average of 3.2 millimeters per year. The glaciers are also melting, causing flooding in the upper part of the Yangtze River. This ruins farming soil and good land. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of China. Now, Delegate of South Africa, you recognize. Thank you to our Honorable Chair and fellow Delegate. Yeah. Climate change in South Africa is leading to increased temperatures and river. Variability, the various effects of the climate change on rural communities are expected to include drought, depletion of water resources and biodiversity, soil erosion, decreased sustenance economics and the season of cultural activities. Heat exposures can increase irritability, aggression and violence. A major concern given the rates of physical and sexual violence in schools in South Africa, both people on pupils and between teacher and a pupil. These uh, symptoms affect concentration and the student learning and even school attendance and rates of asthma attacks. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate, for your points. It was well researched. Now, Delegate of Finland, you're recognized. Thank you. The climate of Finland is influenced most by its latitude. Finland is located between 60 and 70 m because of Finland's northern location. Winter is a longer season. Only on the south coast and the southwest is summer as long as winter. On average, winter lasts from early January to late February in the outermost inland, in the archipelago and the warmest locations along the southwestern coast, notably in Hanko mm -hmm. and from early October to mid-May in the most elevated locations such as northwestern Lapland and the lowest valleys in northern eastern. Lapland, this means the southern portions of the country are snow covered about three to four months of the year and the northern for about seven months. The long winter causes about half of the annual 500 to 600 millimeters, which is 19.7 to 23.6 in precipitation in the north to fall as snow. Precipitation in the south amounts of about 600 to 700 millimeters, which is 23.6 to 27.6 in annually, like that of the north. It occurs all over the year, though not so much it snows. In Köppen climate classification, Finland belongs to the DF group, continental subtracted of boreal climates. The southern coast is DFB, humid continental mild summer, wet all year, and the rest of the country is DFC, subtracted with cool summer, wet all year. The climate of Finland has characteristics of both maritime and continental climate. The Atlantic Ocean to the west and the Eurasian continent to the east interact to modify the climate of the country. The warm waters of the Gulf Stream and North Atlantic drift currents play a big role in the climate of the Norway, Sweden and Finland, which continuously warm the region. If weren't for these countries, the winters in Scandinavia and Perón Scandia would be much colder. Westerly, wind brings the warm air currents into Baltic areas and to the country shores, moderating winter temperatures, especially in the south and southwest in cities like Helsinki and Turku, where winter high tends to be between 0 and 5 degrees, 32 and 41 degrees Fahrenheit, but a cold snap like one that occurred in mid-January 2016 can cause temperature to plunge well below 20 degrees. These winds because of cloud associated systems accompanying the westerlies also decrease the amount of sunshine received during the summer. By contrast, the continental high pressure system situated over the Eurasian continent contracts the maritime influences occasionally causing severe winters and high temperature in the summer. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate. Now, Delegate of New Zealand, you're recognized. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. The sudden winter has just ended in New Zealand has the warmest ever recorded, and scientists say that climate change is driving temperatures even higher. For three months through August, the temperature was 49.8 Celsius, according to New Zealand National Institutes of Water. 
the 1.3 Celsius above long-term average and 0.2 Celsius higher than the previous record posted last year. Scientists have been keeping records since 1909. Some of the warmest winters have been recent. The top of a background global warming this year were, were more warm winds than usual from the north and warmer sea temperatures. The underlying warming trend can be tracked through carbon dioxide concentration, which has increased in New Zealand from 320 parts per million 50 years ago to about 412 parts per million today. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate. Now, Delegate of Greece, you're recognized. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. How will climate change affect Greece? The climate of Greece will become drier due to the decrease in rainfall by 20 to 30 percent in the summer and by 10 percent in winter. Periods at no rainfall whatsoever will be getting longer. The moisture defect will increase by up to 12 percent and an increased tendency of soil conversion to dry land in 60 percent of arable land will appear. Thank you. Thank you so much, Delegate of Greece. Is there any other delegate who wants to be the part of the same moderate caucus? Because chair is already exhausted with the current moderated caucus list for the climate change. No? Delegate of Sweden, would you like to go ahead? Delegate of Sweden would like to raise a motion to discuss greenhouse gas emission. 12 minutes, 1.20 seconds per A. Thanks so much, Delegate. So, Delegate of Sweden would like to raise a motion for greenhouse gas emission and the total time should be 18 minutes for delegate 120 seconds. Those who want to be the part of this moderated caucus, you need to respond. You can respond in the chat box, write down your country's name. Otherwise, simply you can raise your hand. I'll, I'll directly recognize those who want to be the part of this moderated caucus. Delegate of Finland. Delegate South Africa. OK. So far, I do have Japan. South Africa, Finland, and Sweden, all these country. In case any other delegate who want to be the part of this moderate caucus, they can respond in chat box. Okay, thanks so much. So the first delegate is Delegate of Sweden. You're recognized. Please establish yourself, Delegate. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Sweden has a goal of producing zero greenhouse gas emission by the year 2045. Greenhouse gas emissions from Sweden economy accounted to 13.4 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent in the first quarter of 2020. As far as environmental policies are concerned, the Swedish Parliament has adopted national environmental goals. Being a member of the EU, the EU environmental policy is in many aspects of the Swedish environmental law. Policy. The EU Emission Trading Directive. This policy includes the Greenhouse Gas Emission Act. This new act makes provision for greenhouse gas emission to reduce at a new rate of 2.2% as compared to 1.74% before 1st January 2021. Policy. Climate Change Act. The Swedish government has implemented a Climate Change Act, which they expect to reach zero greenhouse gas emissions by the year 2045. Plans for vehicle fleet free of fossil fuels by 2030. Sweden implemented a bus premium for all public electric buses to reduce the CO2 emissions and other air pollutants. To back their zero greenhouse gas plan, the government of Sweden declined the input of a gas line as it goes against the Climate Act. The government sacrificed the short-term gas... Now you can conclude. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate of Finland, you're recognized. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Latest release, greenhouse gas emissions decreased by 9%, 21st May 2021. According to statistics, Finland instant preliminary data, the total emissions of greenhouse gases in 2020 corresponded with 48.3 million tons of carbon dioxide, which is CO2 EQ. Compared with the previous year, emissions decreased by 9%. The fall in emissions was affected by the warm winter, recent changes in the structure of electricity production, and a decrease in transport performance. The effect of the corona pandemic on emissions reductions is not available from the inventory data, but because of the amount of emissions was affected not only by exceptional circumstances, but also by weather and cyclical fluctuations in industry. But the exceptional conditions were visible as the decrease in transport emissions. Emissions not included in the EU emissions trading system fell by 3% since by exceeded the annual emissions locations set by EU by 0.1 million tons of CO2 equivalent on the basis of data so far. Fundal would meet its emission reduction commitments for emissions not included in the EU, emissions trading system return for the period of 2013 to 2020, especially the decrease in fellings from the previous year increased the net sink of 
the LULUCF sector, i.e. land use, land use change and forestry, forestry, which according to the incident preliminary data was 23.0 million tons of CO2 EQ. Emissions and removal in the LULUCF sector are not included in the total emissions described above. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> Delegate of South Africa, you're recognized. Thank you to our honorable chair and fellow delegate. In South Africa's environment, the department states that the country emitted 556 million metric tons of CO2 EQ in 2017, of the figure of 84.75% was from carbon dioxide, 9.28% from methium, 4.81% from nitrous oxide, and 1.16% from fluid gases. Just an overview of our greenhouse gases. We have overview carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and fluid nitrogen gases. And our fastest greenhouse gas is hydrofluorocarbons, HFCS, are the fastest growing category of GHC, increasing annually at a rate of 10 to 15 percent, and are used in the refrigeration, cooling, and as solvents in place of ozone depleting chlorophyll carbons. CFCS. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate. Uh, now, Delegate of Japan, you're recognized. Please establish yourself. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Japan's total greenhouse gas admissions in 2019 were 1,212,000,000 tons of carbon dioxide. And the decrease in CO2 admissions from electricity produced due to the wider use of lower carbon electricity. Prime Minister Yoshida Suga said Japan will strive by 2030 to cut its admissions by 46% from 2013, up from the earlier goals of 26% to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. Thank you. Delegate of Japan, thanks so much. Thanks so much, Delegate. Um, so I would like to conclude it. So from my side, I like today's session is already done. And uh, tomorrow, once again, we'll come with our new moderated caucus, our research work. And I'm, I'm really glad to see like most of the delegate, they have done well research work under the guidance of our coordinator. Uh, I really appreciate all these students, uh, our coordinator, ma'am. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, the session has been uh, really has gone on really well. I feel like our delegates are no longer nervous about what to expect. They seem to be speaking with a lot more confidence, and I'm sure many of them will. You will be seeing them in a lot more Model U United Nations sessions. Great. I thank you so much, Mr. Honorable Chair for this very, very great experience that you have brought to our learners of South Africa, and especially to the Dr. Indira Naidu's Early Learning Academy. I think this is just a stepping stone of what we are going to anticipate for 2022, most definitely. And I was really very impressed. They were raising motions, and oh, wow, I was so amazed. This was a very, very great experience. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I really appreciate this opportunity, and we are going to carry on next year as well. Thanks so much, ma'am. It's all your because of all your efforts that you know during pandemic you plan and you're implementing and you know, all these things. And thanks so much to Karisma ma'am also taking efforts that you know these learners should come up with their stuff. So credit goes to both of you, ma'am, and uh, and also to the delegates like the way they are doing research work on their own and following the guidance. I really appreciate all of them. Thanks so much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Chair, our program coordinator, Karishma Kandilal, and the delegates of the respective countries. Uh, delegates, uh, you have come a very, very long way. Stay positive, work hard, and make it happen. Uh, leaders never stop learning. Leaders never quit. And today, it is quite evident to see how you have persevered to actually to reach where you are. Believing in yourself is the first secret to success. Believe in yourself and let things happen. Uh, before we commence, we will have Karishma, 
render the prayer. Thank you very much. And then we'll over to our chair. Good day, dear Likits and Chair. Can we please have a moment of silence as I render the prayer? Dear Lord, as we gather before you today to participate in this academic contest, make us aware that we do not do this competition uh, for our own glory, but to glorify your name. Grant your wisdom so that the delegates will value the friendship and cooperation that happens today more than the glory of winning. Bestow your generosity and love to all of us present today. Whatever we accomplish in this challenge, we offer to you. Amen. We'd like to introduce our chair, Mr. Patak, who is the head of World Education Events based in India. So today we'll be participating in the India and Abroad Model United Nations. I'll also like to introduce each of our delegates. First, we have Jasmine Mutusami, Delegate of Brazil. Arya Hariprasad, Delegate of Sweden. Cassie Marie Kurnobali, Delegate of Greece. Gabrielle Amelia Gavinda, Delegate of New Zealand. Joshua Simon Pillay, Delegate of South Africa. Priya Samtusi Naidu, Delegate of China. Saishna Rabichan, Delegate of Japan. Shriya Pungavanam Naidu, Delegate of Finland. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks so much, ma'am. Good morning, respected ma'am, Dr. Naidu and Karishma ma'am. Thanks so much. It's a big helping hand from your end so that these delegates are performing well. Well, um, so today is our next session and I'm very excited. Delegates, I'm very sure like before presenting your draft resolution, you'll have a good discussion related to the, your sub agendas. And whatever resolution you guys are going to pass, we'll make it sure that it should reach to United Nations. Because, you know, whenever we are conducting it, so United Nations expects like IAMUN should become a helping hand to shut up the problem. So, like I'm, I'm very sure, like you must have done your two points that we were supposed to complete earlier, and two more new points can help the real United Nations. So now we are going to commence today's session with the roll call. Delegate of Japan. Present and voting. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate of Finland. Present and voting. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate of South Africa. Present and voting. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate of China. Delegate of China. Delegate, please check your audio. Uh, delegate of Brazil. Thank you so much, Delegate. Delegate of Greece. Present and voted. Delegate of Sweden. Present and voting. Thank you so much, Delegate. Delegate of New Zealand. Present and voting. Thank you so much, Delegate. Delegate, is there any point or motion on the floor? Please feel free to raise. Uh, you're having both of the options. The first one, like you can virtually raise your hand. And second, you can directly comment in chat box, write down your country's name. You will be recognized, Delegate. Okay, Delegate of Greece. Delegate of Greece would like to set the agenda on environmental issues for water pollution. Delegate, what should be the time? Eight minutes, total time one minute each per delegate. Thank you so much, Delegate. Is there any other delegate who would like to raise an emotion? No? Okay, thank you so much, Delegate of Greece. So, Delegate of Greece would like to raise a motion related to environment issues, and the total time is eight minutes per delegate, 60 seconds. So, those who are in favor, they can write in chat box. They can just type in chat box, yes. Thank you so much, Delegates. I can't see any objection. We won't move towards the voting process. Delegate of Greece, congratulations, your motion clearly passes. Those who want to be the part of it need to respond in chat box. Once again, write down your country's name, Delegate. Delegate of South Africa, followed by Sweden. Okay, Finland. 
followed by Japan. Thanks so much, delegates. If you want to be the part of it, you can just write it down in chat box. You will be recognized. Delegate of Sudan, you're recognized. Please establish now. Thank you, honorable chair and fellow delegates. Sweden's three issues, namely acid rain damage to soils and lakes, sea level rise and pollution of the North Sea and Baltic Sea. The Baltic Sea pollution. Water pollutants come from international shipping industries, sewage, regional industry, waste treatment plant, transportation sector, and leakage from agriculture. As a result, in 2009, the EU member states agreed to participate in a pilot protection indicator to save the Baltic Sea region. This program includes agreements and government funding to prevent agriculture industry and waste treatment plant to reduce from reaching the North and Baltic Sea. Sea level rise. Global warming has an effect on sea level rise. In general, increased global temperatures contribute to sea level rise by causing thermal expansion and possibly by promoting the melting of ice caps, which flow into the ocean. Acid rain damage to soils and lakes. In 1872, acid rain was first dedicated in Sweden. Sulfur and nitrogen, and nitrogen G from, GG, from GHGE combined with water in the air to create sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide which are transferred to soils and lakes upon precipitation. Acid rain affects bodies of water such as lakes with limited ability to neutralize acid pH levels. Flora and wildlife, in particular aquatic life, are unable to survive in acidic conditions. Thanks. Thanks so much, Delegate of Sweden. Now, Delegate of Finland, you recognize. Please establish yourself, Delegate. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Finland is rich in surface waters with a total of 187,888 lakes and ponds larger than 500 square meters and rivers totaling 2,500 kilometers in length. Almost a tenth of the country's land area is covered by water. Finland's lakes contain only 235 cubic kilometers of water. Finland's shallow lakes are easily contaminated by pollution. Even relatively low concentrations of excess nutrition, acidic deposition of other harmful contaminants can easily disrupt their sensitive aquatic ecosystems. Discharges of harmful substances into Finland's inland and coastal waters have fallen considerably during the last few decades. Most of Finland's classified water bodies are high in or good ecological state. Waters with low ecological status than good include almost a third of classified lakes, half of the classified stretches of rivers, and more than half of the total extent of coastal waters. With a few exceptions, the chemical state of water is good. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate of Japan, you are recognized. Please establish yourself. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Water pollution is one of the main environmental issues that we are facing as more than 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. Majority of water pollution problems in Japan has been manifested in outbreaks of mercury and candomon poisoning in humans and nationwide occurrences of large fish kills. Japan has a major problem with water pollution because of leaks from our nuclear plants. Japan has achieved a reasonable supply of safe drinkable water. Japan has put into place many laws regarding water pollution. Japan has wastewater treatment plants that are removing pollutants from wastewater through physical, chemical, and biological processes. The more efficient these are, the cleaner the water becomes. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Japan. Is there any other delegate who wants to be the part of it? Thanks so much, Delegate. So, Delegate, Chair is already exhausted with the current moderated caucus list. Now, is there any point or motion on the floor? Delegate of New Zealand, would you like to be the part of it? Delegate of New Zealand, you are recognized. Please establish, Delegate. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Water pollution in New Zealand is an increasing concern for those who use and care for waterways and for New Zealand. An increasing population is linked to an increase in water pollution due to the range causes as rural land use, industrial use, and urban development. Fresh water quality is under pressure from agriculture, hydropower, urban development, pest invasions, and climate change. While pollution from point sources have been reduced, refuse pollution such as nutrients and sediments development and storm water in towns is not under control. There are more than 800 water quality moderating sites in New Zealand that are regularly sampled. As of January 2019, Auckland is a region with New Zealand's most polluted waterways, with 62% of rivers and lakes created poor by the Ministry of Environment for swimming, and 0% of rivers and lakes created as good. In 2018, waterways across New Zealand have been shown improvements across a number of quality measures moderated as the LAWA data. Thank you. 
Thanks so much, Delegate. Now, Delegate Abrizio, please establish yourself. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. The three main causes of water pollution in Brazil are the leaky landfill, industrial waste, and sewage. It has been reported to contain high levels of bacteria and viruses that could likely lead to stomach and respiratory illnesses. Water pollution in Brazil is not only a major health issue, but an environmental concern as well. Fishermen have seen major decreases in fish and wildlife populations in the coastal regions. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Brazil. Now, Delegate of China, you're recognized. Please establish. Thank you, Honorable Chair. One of the major concerns in water pollution for China is the Dragon Boat Festival, which is a huge water festival and has a major negative environmental impact on the marine ecosystem. The ecosystem is compromised due to the high level of debris discarded into waterways. Overfishing is also depleting the edible marine life at a rapid pace. The type of commercial fishing generally used is damaging and destroying the marine ecosystem. Industrial effluents are easily diverted into the water, making its way into lakes, rivers, and the ocean. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate Chair is already exhausted with the current moderated caucus list. Now, is there any other point or motion on the floor? Uh, Delegate uh, of China, would you like to raise a motion? Yes, Honorable uh, Chair. The motion to raise on the effects of COVID-19 on the environment. Thanks so much, Delegate. And what should be the total time? Eight minutes and total time per delegate, one minute. Thanks so much, Delegate. Is there any other delegate who would like to raise motion here? No? OK, great. No problem. So motion raised by Delegate of China is actually effects of COVID-19 on the environment. So those who are in favor need to respond in chat box quickly. You need to write down in chat box. Is there any second? They can write no. Great. So seeing no objection, motion clearly passes. Congratulations, Delegate of China. Motion is actually passed by this committee. Now, now Delegate, uh, those who want to be the part of it, you need to write down your country's name so that you will be recognized in chat box. Delegate of South Africa, followed by Sweden, Followed by Finland, followed by Japan, followed by China, Delegate of Brazil. Thanks so much, Delegate. The first Delegate we do have is Delegate of South Africa. You're recognized. Please establish yourself, Delegate. Thank you to our Honorable Chair and fellow Delegate. COVID-19 has spread rapidly across South Africa's globe. Reaching every continent, South Africa announced its first case of COVID-19 on March 5, 2020, and currently has one of the highest case incidents on the continent as of April 22nd, 2020. The number of confirmed cases has risen from 3,063 uh, with 65 deaths. Also, it has uh, first uh, infections from SARS-CoV-2 were discovered in Wuhan, China. The actual source of viral transmission of humans remains unclear of whether the virus became uh, pathogenic uh, before the spillover event. And Lots of people's jobs has been changed also as less pollution as people have to stay in their homes. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate of Sweden, you're recognized. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Sweden stands out among other European countries by the degree of restrictive measures taken towards handling the COVID-19 outbreak and its effects on the environment. Several studies have taken advantage of the reduction in human activity, which implies a reduction in pollution from human activities to evaluate the environmental impacts associated with such restrictions. Contributors in this area have focused on the change in air quality in connection with major urban areas with severe restrictions. Studies have reported the impact of imposed restrictions on noise emissions, in particular the potential traffic-related noise reduction in urban environments. The COVID crisis is having a direct impact on energy use and greenhouse gas emissions at both global and UE levels. Greenhouse gas emissions were expected to reduced due to lockdown restrictions, increased reliance on single-use PPE such as masks and gloves to help prevent the spread of the virus has been a major contributor to waste problems in the environment. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Sweden. Delegate of Finland, you're recognized. Please tell us. 
Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Coronavirus disease 2019. COVID-19 is the official name of a respiratory infectious disease caused by new coronavirus that started first in Wuhan, China, and outspread worldwide with an unexpectedly fast speed. Flights have been canceled worldwide and transportation have been closed nationwide and across international borders. As a consequence, the economic activities have been stock markets and has been dropped the COVID-19 lockdown has several social and economic effects. Additionally, COVID-19 has caused several impacts on global migration. On the other hand, such lockdown, along with minimal human mobility, has impacted the natural environment somewhat positively. Overall, carbon emissions have dropped and on the COVID-19 lockdown has led to an improvement in air quality and reduction in water pollution in many cities around the globe. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Finland. Now, Delegate of Japan, you're recognized. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Japan believes that the COVID-19 pandemic has been a blessing and a nightmare at the same time. The economic shutdown under the COVID-19 pandemic has had two major impacts on our environment. It has improved our air and water quality. Air pollution and carbon dioxide emissions has fallen rapidly due to the reduction of flight and the use of transport. Restricted human interaction with nature during the crisis time has been a blessing for nature and the environment. The COVID-19 crisis has generated a large amount of health waste linked to plastic consumption, such as gloves, masks, disposable plastic items for respiration and medical needles. Japan believes that an alternative material should be used instead of using plastic for these medical items. Going forward, we should make a commitment to install the principles of sustainable development in our social behavior, lifestyles, and public policy making. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Japan. Now, Delegate of China, you're recognized. Please establish yourself. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. The recent coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, was established in a marketplace where no proper health and safety regulations were adhered. This virus has the capacity to mutate repeatedly. The use of face masks has become mandatory. Millions of these masks are improperly discarded on a daily basis, making its way into waterways and drainage systems. The manholes and drainage systems are becoming clogged with these added garbage, creating an ideal breeding ground for cockroaches and rats. Huge quantities of these masks are also making its way into rivers, dams and the ocean, affecting marine life. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of China. Now, Delegate of Brazil, you're recognized. Please establish. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. The World Health Organization has recently declared South America the new epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic, as Brazil has become one of the most affected countries. Besides public health and economic impacts, social isolation has also caused indirect environmental effects. The aim of the study was to assess environmental impacts caused by shifts on solid waste production and management due to the COVID-19 pandemic in Brazil. They have also analyzed data from the 30 cities representing a population for more than 53.8 million people. Unexpectedly, solid waste production in the main cities in Brazil has decreased during the social isolation period, possibly because of reduced activity in the commercial area. The latest data on solid waste in Brazil have believed that more than 35% of medical waste has not been treated properly. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Brazil. Now, uh, yeah, Delegate of Sweden, you are recognized. Delegate of Sweden would like to raise a motion for unmoderated carcass for 15 minutes. Great. So those who are in favor, please respond in chat box. Thanks so much, delegates. I can see maximum yes. So delegates, you are having a very small break. In between, you can plan your strategy. And after that, we'll have one more moderated caucus. And then again, I'll give you half an hour break for your draft resolution. Thanks so much. So we'll meet after 10 to 15 minutes. Delegate of Greece, what point of motion you're having? A delegate of Greece would like to set the agenda on environmental issues for water pollution. Delegate, uh, can you just refresh your motion? 
because the agenda is already set. So you can raise a motion for your sub agendas. So you want to raise a motion for water pollution. Okay. Delegate, what should be the total time? Three minutes, one minute per each delegate. Okay. Thanks so much, delegate. Is there any other delegate who would like to raise a motion? Okay, great. So motion raised by delegate of Greece related to water pollution and the total time is three minutes for delegate one minute. Those who are in favor, please write down in chat box. You need to write yes. Thanks so much, delegate. In the rest of the delegate, those who are in favor, they can write it down. And is there any second for the motion? Okay, seeing no objection, we'll move towards it. Delegate, those who want to be the part of it, they can write country's name in chat box so that you will be recognized. Delegate of Greece followed by delegate of South Africa. Any other delegate who want to be the part of this current moderated caucus list? The first delegate is Delegate of Greece. Please establish. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Water pollution is a significant problem due to industrial pollutants, agricultural chemicals such as fertilizers and pesticides, and sewage. The Gulf of Sunracos is one of the most polluted areas because 50% of Greece's industrial facilities are located there. However, the water quality is very good because there are not so many pressures as in other countries. For several reasons, the quality of the environment in Greece is excellent, and this is reflected on surface and underground water resources. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Greece. Delegate of South Africa, you're recognized. Thank you to our Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. In South Africa, the star of fresh water is decreasing in quality because of in pollution and the destruction of river catchments caused by taxation, deforestation, damming of rivers, destruction of wetlands, industry, mining, agriculture, energy use, and water pollution. And it is estimated that around 5 million of people were drinking the contaminated water warrior and other diseases. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of South Africa. Now, is there any other delegate who wants to be part of it or want to add any extra point? Delegate of China would like to raise a motion to cultural festivals and its impact on the environment. Delegate, what should be the total time? Eight minutes and one minute per delegate. Thanks so much, Delegate. Is there any other delegate who would like to raise motion? Delegate of Sweden. Delegate of Sweden would like to raise a motion to discuss the issue of forestry logging. Eight minutes total time and one minute per delegate. That's great. Any other delegate would like to raise motion? Motion raised by a delegate of China related to cultural festival and impact on environment. And the total time is on per delegate 60 seconds. Delegate, those who are in favor, please respond in chat box. Need to write yes. Is there any second for the motion? Great. Seeing no objection, motion clearly passes. Congratulations, delegate of China. Now, delegate, those who want to be the part of this moderated caucus, you need to write your country's name. Please remember your country's name so that you will be recognized for this moderated caucus. Delegate of China, followed by delegate of South Africa. After South Africa, we do have delegate of Japan. Even the rest of the delegate, if you want, your name should be added in this list. Please respond. Okay. So the first delegate is Delegate of China. Please establish. Thank you, Honorable Chair. China hosts some of the biggest cultural festivals like the Yulin Dog Meat Festival and the Dragon Ball Festival. The Yulin Dog Meat Festival has many environmental challenges and health hazards. It, some of the environmental challenges are parasites and flies hovering in and around the dog meat, spreading and creating airborne disease. Another major health hazard of the Yulin Dog Meat Festival is rabbit dogs being culled and served to people. If the rabies virus transforms like the SARS virus, it will become communable amongst people. The disease will spread from rural to high density urban areas. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of China. Um, no, Delegate of South Africa, you're recognized. Thank you, Honorable Chair. In South Africa, we have our popular uh, South African uh, festivals. These ones are Ultra South Africa, Flashy Fen, Bushfire Festival, the Clay Karoo National Art Festival of Arupa, the Management International Jazz Festival, the Africa Burn, the Christ Art Festival, and others. All of our 
and because of all the pollution that happens due to for example, many cardboard, plastic, and many other materials on the ground. So all of our scans that we spread around get into treatment and all kinds of things. Uh, delegate, thanks so much. Now, Delegate of Japan, you're recognized. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. In Japan, biologists have found climate change is affecting species in the ecosystem including earlier flowering time of cherry trees, which are the most important in culture symbolizing in Japan. Cherry Blossom Festival are also important to local economy. Planting these trees help increase oxygen levels in the atmosphere. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate. Cherry is exhausted with the current moderated caucus list. Fine, Delegate. Now the next motion raised by Delegate of Sweden. Delegate of Sweden, would you refresh your motion once again for the benefit of this committee? Delegate of Sweden would like to raise a motion to discuss the issue of forestry logging. Okay, great, Delegate. And the total time you give is eight minutes on for Delegate 60 seconds. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Delegate of Sweden. Now, those who are in favor, please respond in chat box. You need to write yes. Great. Is there any second? Great. So seeing no objection, motion clearly passes. Congratulations, Delegate of Sweden. We've adopted this motion. Now those who want to be the part of this motion, please write down your country's name in chat box or maybe virtually you can raise your hand. Delegate of South Africa. Okay, so in case any other delegate who wants to be the part of this motion, they can simply respond in chat box. You need to drop down your country's name. Your name will be added in this list. Okay, great. So the first delegate is delegate of South Africa. You are recognized for the question. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Logging operations greatly after the natural structure of the forest by changing the amount of downward material. The incident of snags of the standing dead trees with cavities that provide wildlife habitat and reducing the canopy cover of the intimate area with the of a uh, loss of uh, cool air, the loss, the loss of habitat, and many others. Thank you. Thank you, Delegate. Now, Delegate of Sweden. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Sweden's relaxed policy, forestry laws often leaves decisions about logging to the timber companies, and as a result, large swaths of biologically rich forest forests are being lost. Piles of high con conversation value trees are being legally left to rot. Only about 45% of Sweden's forestry area is being managed sustainably. The root of Sweden's current forestry problem can be tracked to the law that was supposed to be solved, the, to the law that's supposed to solve them. A 1993 act requiring that every logging in operation balance production with conservation, but logging is not strictly regulated under the act which allows freedom with responsibility but because the agency is understaffed to manage act companies are left to make decisions the survival of many species like birds fungi and moss are left at risk of displaced or of habitat the fsc is attempting to solve the logging problem by setting aside a portion of land for conservation thank you honorable chair thanks so much delegate of sweden another delegate who want to be the part of this present moderate caucus list Okay. Now, is there any other point or motion on the floor? Delegate of Finland, once again, you are recognized. Delegate of Finland would like to raise a motion on environmental issues for water resources. Total time eight minutes and one minute for delegates. Thanks so much, delegate. Delegate, those who are in favor, please respond in chat box once again. Okay, your time finished. So seeing an objection, we'll move towards the formal voting for this motion. Once again, you need to respond just a second. Your time starts now. I'm gonna reduce the time to respond, so you have to do it quickly. Find that again, your time finished. The advantage is given to Delegate of Finland. Delegate of Finland, you're recognized. Um, you can speak now. Is there any other delegate who wants to be the part of it? Please write down the country's name. 
Delegate of Finland, you're up for next. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Water resources. Finland is one of the world's richest countries in its water resources. The ridges making part of Finnish national landscape contain excellent groundwater released through springs. Only 3% of the world's water is sweet water. The bulk of sweet water is in glaciers and only 0.5% of these water resources are available to mankind in lakes, rivers and groundwater. One of the most recognizable features of Finnish landscapes are sequences of ridges, even 700 kilometers long, which appear on an average every 10 to 20 kilometers. Finland ridges, borders, lake, basins, and high immense groundwater pools inside them. Two large border in formations on of the ancient glacier, the Salpol case, in contain Finland's largest groundwater resources. Finland's ridges collecting groundwaters were formed in the late ice age about 10,000 to 12,000 years ago as a result of meltwater activity of continental glacier. The meltwater splash and sorted from the stone matter of the glacier's bottom sea, often almost symmetric layers containing sand and shingles. There are at present about 6,000 groundwater areas in Finland, forming over 5 million cubic meters of groundwater a day. Although over 60% of the water distributed by supply plants is groundwater, only less than 15% of the renewable groundwater resources are in use. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of Finland. Uh, is there any other delegate who wants to be the part of this current moderate progress list? And raise hand, or maybe you can respond in chat box, you can write down your country's name. No? So, Chair is actually exhausted with the current moderated caucus list. Is there any other point or motion that delegate would like to discuss here? Delegate of Finland, you're recognized. Delegate of Finland would like to raise the motion on what measures are being on and can be taken to prevent the harmful effects of heavy metal industry and environment. Fine, delegate. And total time? Total time is eight minutes and per delegate is one minute. Thanks so much, delegate. Now, those who are in favor, please respond in chat box. The time starts now. I'm going to reduce it, your response time. Fine, your time finished. Sorry, delegate. Time finished. So uh, once again, I can take 50-50. Delegate of Finland, you're recognized. You can proceed. Thank you, Honorable Chair and fellow delegates. Important areas of environmental protection needed in the industry from the standpoint of eco-efficiency, notwithstanding the current good level of environmental protection in the Finnish metals industry, reduction of energy use, deposits, sludges, dust, and emissions of carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, and metal needs. To continue, it is possible to upgrade eco-efficiency by producing more metals and by products from smaller amounts of raw materials and by recovering waste. Thank you. Thanks so much. Those who want to draft now final resolution need to respond in chat box. Great, so I can say maximum yes. Now we are going to have half an hour break. Thanks so much, Dr. Naidu and Karishwana. Thank you, ladies. We'll meet after 30 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Thank you. Delegate of Finland, you're recognized. Delegate of Finland would like to raise a motion to resume the formal session. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate, those who are in favor, please write on in chat box. Yes. Thanks so much, all the delegates. Now, delegates, uh, please remember we are moving to this formal voting of draft resolution, but don't you think in case your draft resolution is not presented here on the screen, it doesn't mean like chair is not going to award you marks. It is equally important, but we want like one should be presented in front of all. So that's why we've taken only one. But uh, once again, we are going to analyze both the draft resolution and final resolution and final points. We are going to send it to United Nations. Okay, great. So here we proceed now. Uh, we'll have that draft resolution on our skin. I request now sponsors one by one they can read the previous point which is actually passed by united nation unep committee 
delegate of Brazil, Japan, South Africa, and China, they can come forward. Delegate of China. Honorable Chair, Delegate of China will read the first point. Yeah, Delegate, please proceed. Scarlet. Recalling decision 27-2 of the Governing Council taken at its 27th and Universal Session held in Nairobi from the 18th to the 22nd of February 2013 to strengthen the presence of the United Nations Environmental Programme in order to assist countries in the implementation of their natural environmental programs, policies and plans. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate of China. Yeah, Delegate of Japan. Please proceed. Delegate, delegates of Japan would like to read the next point. Delegate, please tell us. Welcoming the progress and achievements of environment ministers to which the United Nations Environment Program provides support and recognizing those forums as important platforms for strengthening the engagement of countries in the preparation of the follow-up to sessions of the United Nations environmental pro programs. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate would like to proceed with the next point. Noting the request of the first forum of ministers and Environment Authorities of Asia and the Pacific to the Executive Director of the United Nations Environment Programme to hold regular sessions of the Forum of Ministers and Environment Authorities of Asia and the Pacific. Thanks so much, Delegate. Delegate of South Africa would like to read the final point. Delegate, please tell us. Welcoming the efforts of the United Nations Environment Program to develop innovative educational tools and methodologies, including massive open online courses for the emissionate is knowledge base. Thank you. Thanks so much, Delegate. Now, all these sponsors, once again, you need to come up with one point that you've completed your discussion in IAM in 2021 UNAP Committee. Delegate, please feel free to start. Delegate of South Africa would like to read the first one. Yeah, sure, Delegate. The initiatives of renewable energy, such as wind turbines and solar panels, to reduce CO2 emissions. Great. Any delegate will have any kind of question or if they're not going to support it. So, you know, the option, once again, I would like to tell you, uh, you do have, in first round, you, you are having these options, so like yes, no. You need to write down all these in chat box or maybe yes with rights, no with rights, abstain and pass. Remember, yes means you're supporting, no means you're not supporting. Yes with rights means you're supporting and you want to explain it, why you're supporting and you'll get chance in second round. And no with rights means you're not supporting and you, you want to actually explain it, why you're not actually supporting it. That explanation you can give in second round. Abstain means you are actually not interested at all related to this point. Maybe it is not that much benefiting your own country. So it can be various reasons. Uh, simply pass means till now you haven't decided that you are going to decide in third round. So delegate, now your time is start, started. You can respond in chat box. Yes, no, yes with the right, no with the right. Abstain and pass. All these options you, you do have. All the delegates are supposed to take part in it. Great. Great. So I can see it like no one has having here any objection related to this point. And I can't see any yes with rise or no with rise. So that means we don't have any second round. Simply we are moving towards the final round. And in final round, you're having yes and no. Delegates, you can start responding for the final round of first clause. All the delegates need to vote.
for the first class. Great, great. So congratulations, all the sponsors. The IAM and UNAP committee had actually passed your first clause. Now we'll go for the second clause. So I, I request the sponsors to come forward and proceed with the second one. Yeah. Delegate, you can proceed. I can see like two delegates are interested. So you can decide. Either can start. Bearing in mind that changing our main energy source to clean to the to clean and renewable energy is the best way to stop using fossil fuels. The spec boom is a succulent plant that helps by fight air pollution. It has the ability to sequester or capture four, four, four to ten tons of carbon per hectare. Switch to sustainable transport. Okay, uh, I guess there was a little bit of audio problem. Fine, so delegate is already on the screen. Um, now your time starts. For the first round of voting, where you do have options, yes, no, yes with rights, no with rights, abstain and pass. Delegate, your time already started. You can start responding now. Great. So I can't see here uh, any yes with right or no with right. So we'll directly move towards the final round of voting. And once again, you need to respond. For the second clause, your time started. All the delegates. Need to utilize your voting power. Okay, thanks, Ms. Delegate. Congratulations, sponsors. I can't see any objections. Okay, great. So, your second clause is actually accepted by IAM and UNAP committee. Great. So, now we'll move towards the next clause. The sponsors, please come forward with your third point. A delegate of China, you're recognized. Delegate of China will read the third point. Encourages the use of cloth and bamboo face masks, which are reusable and biodegradable. Reuse and recycle sanitizer bottles. WHO, which is the World Health Organization, to enforce regulation to be gazetted to fine offending countries slash governments. Great. So. OK, just a second. Fine. Delegates, first round of voting. Please be ready. Your time starts now. Great. I uh, can't see here any yes with right or no with right. So once again, we'll move directly to the final round of voting. And once again, you need to respond, delegates. Please write down yes or no. All the delegates need to respond quickly. That's great, delegate. Thanks so much. Congratulations, sponsors. Uh, now we'll move towards the next clause which we do have in our draft resolution. Thanks so much, delegates, sponsors, you're requested to come forward. 
with your next point. Yes, Delegate of Brazil, you are recognized. Delegate of Brazil would like to read the next point. Delegate, please proceed. Keeping in mind, whatever from our beautiful oil factory should not be going to our oceans, so now we should be making filters that lead away from the oceans and dams. Bearing in mind, the companies should be fined for using pipes that lead to the ocean and dams. We recommend redirecting rain gutters and downspouts away from buildings and to rain barrels and gardens, soil, grass, or gravel areas. Great. Thanks so much, Delegate. Now, first round of voting. Uh, you need to respond in the chat box, Delegate. Your time starts now. Those who are in favor, please write on yes, no. Another option that you do have is yes with right, no with right. Abstain and pass. That's great. Thanks so much, delegates. On um, once again, I can't see any yes with right or no with right. That means we can finally move towards the final round of voting. And delegates, your time starts now. Once again, you need to write down yes or no. Congratulations, Mr. Sponsors. I can see our UNFP committee has actually passed this clause even in draft resolution. Great. So now I request once again uh, sponsors to come up with your final point, which is mentioned there. Delegate, you are recognized. Please proceed now. Delegate of South Africa would like to say the last point. Yeah, delegate, please proceed. Request the cultural festivals are relegated by the government with strict health and safety policies in place and phases the strict adherence of COVID-19 protocols and the responsible of disposing of COVID-19 related waste, mainly in circulation of the, these materials. Thank you. Thanks so much, delegate. So, delegates, final clause. Uh, you need to respond once again in chat box. Your time is fast now. And the first round is yes, yes with right, no with right, abstain, and pass. Great. So I can't see here any yes with rise or no with rise. We'll directly move towards the final round of voting. Uh, your time starts now, delegate. You can start doing that. Great. Congratulations to all these sponsors. All the clauses that you put in your draft resolution is actually passed by UNEP Committee of IAMUN 2021. Congratulations. Great. So I really appreciate the efforts made by all the delegates here. And not only that, but all the members, those who actually voted for this draft resolution. So they were quite active. Great. So I'm quite impressed because I can see the age group of these delegates. So what kind of performance I saw is, is really simple and marvelous. I know like all these things happens because of the delegates. They took interest and not only that, the efforts made by our coordinator, Harish Mama and Dr. Naidu. So before winding up, IAMUN session or chapter of 2021, 
I would like to give my final comments. So the fourth thing is, first of all, I would like to give a big shout out to the head of World Education Events, South Africa, Dr. Naidu, and of course, the coordinator of IAMUN 2021, Karisma Ma'am, and I hope and I wish uh, should be the future president of IAMUN South Africa. Dr. Naidu, I can see the bright future of your early learning academy as a student because I can easily understand you never leave any stone unturned to give the best to your students. Dear delegates, I'm indeed surprised with your performance because I told you like your age group and your performance is quite different. So you perform excellent. And I know for me now it's, it, it is going to be challenging to finalize the results. It may take one or two days, but I'm very sure it is a bit difficult. The IAMUN is a global platform and you do not have to be diplomat or a politician to advance you know, your work. Whatever you want, IAMUN will give you the platform. You can raise your voice. And everyone with a phone or a laptop can be a human rights monitor. Not only that, if you want to talk about the environment, if you, talk about, if you want to talk about other issues, it is possible. And everyone with a screen name can mobilize their friends, issues, topics, agendas. All of you can shape the future. So this is all based on my firm conviction that now this is the time for you or for new generation to build human solidarity around the world. So let us join the force, advance together to the future we want. I thank you all. Thank you, Honorable Chair, for this kind words. However, on behalf of the Academy, our delegates, our coordinator, Karishma Kandilal, and our country at large, I'd like to thank you so much for actually granting us the opportunity of actually implementing IA uh, Moon in South Africa. This, we say, a journey of a thousand miles begins with little steps. We have taken the little steps today, and definitely we are going off for a giant sleep. Uh, we have started small, yes. I have seen the initiatives, which I haven't known that our little uh, kids, our junior teams, will have that kind of energy. But I think with your motivation and Karishma Ma'am's motivation at the local level, we have brought out the best in our learners. Also, a very, very special thank you goes to uh, Sebastian and Louis Fenta, who is working tirelessly behind the scenes to ensure that this platform seems so perfect, hit free from a technological perspective. And even further than that on a WhatsApp as well. Uh, thank you all delegates. Thank you for all the parents that are working behind the scenes as well. But Mr. Patak, being the head of World Education Events International, I've seen your standards everywhere, but I I'm so pleased at how you watered this down to fit the junior teams. Uh, I'm sure that you're going to take our school to greater heights in the future. Thank you very much for granting us this opportunity. God bless you all. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Our coordinator, can you have a word? Um, I can't say anything in addition to what Dr. Naidu has already said, but I want to further reiterate how grateful we are to have you on our platform, Mr. Patak, uh, a person of your nature, the head of World Education Events, here to um, introduce the new concept of Model United Nations to the learners of Dr. Indira Naidu's Early Learning Academy. Uh, it's, we are so honored to have you in our presence, and I'm sure that our uh, learners or little delegates, should I say, have learned a lot, not only about the countries that they, have repre that they are representing, but on United Nations uh, in general, how gatherings take place, the procedure. It was all a new concept to them, and I'm hoping that this sparks a newfound interest in them, and we hope to see all these young learners in future model United Nations as well. In South Africa, we would like to perhaps uh, expand on Model United Nations, uh, first starting with a, a few uh, internal events within Dr. Indira Naidu's Early Learning Academy, then maybe widening it and to an inter-school level. And I'm hoping that it, that dream does become a success. And thank you, Mr. Patak, and to all our delegates, as well as technical support team and uh, heads. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mark. 
Delegate of China would like to express her gratitude to the Academy and Mr. Patak for the exposure and opportunity. Thank you to all the delegates who have made this experience fun and exciting. Thank you for exposing us to what we may see in the future years. And thank you for everything. Delegate of Sweden would like to say a few words. Proceed. I would like to say thank you to Mr. Patak, Dr. Naidu, and Karishma Ma'am for this amazing experience. And um, I've learned a lot from this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Delegate of New Zealand would like to say thank you so much to Mr. Patak, to Dr. Naidu, to Karishma Ma'am, and even our support um, tech team, such as Louis Spencer, for helping us and, you know, creating the special opportunity for us to experience this mo um, model United Nations. And, you know, it's, it has really taught all of us delegates how to, you know, more general knowledge about each country. And, you know, this experience has really been amazing. And thank you so much for joining us and, you know, taking your time and effort to listening to all we have to say. And we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, Delegate of Finland. I would like to uh, thank Mr. Patak, Karishma Ma'am, and Dr. Naidu for this great experience. It was really awesome. We learned a lot and a lot of general knowledge of our countries and other countries as well. And we have, I'm sure that all the delegates have put effort in this and making it fun and exciting. Thank you once again. Delegate of Greece. I would like to say thank you to Dr. Naidu and Karishma Ma'am and Mr. Patak for giving us this amazing opportunity to be a part of this. It was a really fun time that I've had. It made my holiday a little bit more exciting to be on the team, even though it felt like a normal school day, waking up, logging on, doing work. It was it was a really, really fun um, experience and I hope that we can do this again. And thank you for this amazing time that I've had with you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, a delegate of grief. I love the way you had persevered, despite being one of the youngest ones. This was awesome. Delegate of Japan. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Candilal and Dr. Naido and Mr. Patak for this experience. It has really been an amazing experience and it's been an eye opener to the world. And thank you for putting up with all the mistakes that I have made. And just thank you all for everything, for the opportunity. Thank you. Delegate of Japan, Delegate of South Africa. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Naidu, Karish Mamam, and Mr. Patak for this lifetime of an opportunity. Um, it's, a, it's like an awakening for our horizons, and uh, this is like many more to come for uh, opportunities that we need to take and not back down. Well done, Delegate of uh, South Africa. You uh, are still going to be in our academy next year, so you'll definitely be partaking in a lot more of these events. I'm glad you did not back down and uh, took this challenge head on. One of our strong leaders from the younger uh, students. Uh, Delegates of Brazil. Um, thank you, Mr. Patak, Dr. Naidu, and Karishma Ma'am. Uh, this was really an amazing, awesome, fun experiment. I love sharing this moment with you guys. I've learned a lot of interesting things about our country and the knowledge that we shared with each other. I hope that we get to do this again. Thank you. I thank you all delegates for living by our motto, strive for excellence. Good morning, our Honourable Chief, Mr. Patak, our IA Moon Coordinator of South Africa, Mrs. Karishma Kandila, and our dearest enthusiastic delegates. We are here today to celebrate the success of your hard work over the past week. Remember, be able to celebrate the success of others as you want others to celebrate yours. Always be happy for other people when they excel well. Congratulate others for receiving their blessing. Your time will come as well. I would like to end with a quote by Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Well, thank you all. God bless. I love you all. Good day, Honorable Chair, Dr. Naidu and delegates. I'm sure we all really enjoyed this experience over the past week, and it's the moment we've all been waiting for the awards. So I'm going to hand you over to Mr. Patak for a brief intro and we'll proceed with the day's program. Thanks so much, ma'am. I know all are very excited for the results, but before that, respected Dr. Nagaman, 
Karishma ma'am and my dear delegates of uh, IMM 2021. I hope that the last week was a wonderful experience for you all and I hope that all of you take along the sweetest memories and lessons that would help you to join future national level South African conference of IMEA. It was a privilege to chair the UNIP committee and to discuss about the environment problems. I really want to thank you. Thank you all for participating in this United Nations conference. The dedication that you guys showed is truly commendable. Sessions were excellent. The talent show videos are indeed mind blowing. And I would like to inform you, I've already sent your resolution to the United Nations. Dr. Naidu, I want to give you a big shout out and also to Karishma Ma that you are taking you know, these young generation to the next level of future. I want to also thank the parents who have supported these young delegates to face this challenge and to develop the new skill. Once again, I'd like to thank you on behalf of World Education Events and IAMU. And I'm very sure you must have enjoyed and learned a new thing. A lot more we do have in future. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We all started off in IA Moon for the first time as Dr. Indira Naidu's Early Learning Academy learners and we left as delegates of countries. So today is the day you'll have been waiting for, the day your results get presented to you. The awards for your IA Moon was divided in three categories. The first category is Special Mention Delegates Award. The delegates in this category obtained an A grade pass in no particular order for this category. Our delegate of Brazil, Jasmine Mutusami. Well done, Jasmine. Continuing in the category of Special Mention Delegates Award, delegates who obtained an A grade pass, we have Cassie Marie Kurbanali, delegate of Greece. Moving on to the next category, the Best Delegate Award. Delegates in this category obtained an A plus grade. In no particular order, we have the delegate of Japan, Saishna Rabichan. Then we have the delegate of South Africa, Joshua Simon Kalei. Then the delegate of Sweden, Arya Hariprasad. Then the delegate of New Zealand, Gabrielle Govinda. Now we move on to the next category, the award for outstanding delegate. In this category, we have two delegates. These delegates have obtained an A double plus grade pass. In no particular order, I present to you delegate of China, Priya Naidu. Our last delegate in this category of outstanding delegates, Shriya Naidu, delegate of Finland. Well done delegates and learners of Dr. Indira Naidu's Early Learning Academy. You have indeed done the Academy proud at the India and Abroad Model United Nations competition of 2021. The learners have, in addition to participating in the Model United Nations competition, submitted talent show submissions. The learners have been awarded for their submissions. Our first award in the category of dance goes to Arya Hariprasad. Congratulations, Arya. Our next awardee in the category of dance is Joshua Simon Pele. Well done, Joshua. Our next awardee is in the category of art. We present this award to Gabrielle Govinda. Well done, Gabrielle. Our next awardee is in the category of solo musician. This award is presented to Jasmine Mutusami. Well done, Jasmine. Our next award is in the category of singing and musical instrument playing. This award goes to Priya Naidu. Well done, Priya. Our next award is in the category of cooking talent. This award goes to Saishna Rabichan. Well done, Saishna. And our last award for the talent show goes to Shriya Naidu in the category of singing talent. Well done, Shriya. Well done to all our learners of the Dr. Indira Naidu's Early Learning Academy. And a special thanks goes out to Mr. Patak, head of World Education Events, who is with us on our platform, broadcasting all the way from India. Your efforts do not go unnoticed, Mr. Patak. You have done an excellent job and you've really developed our learners in moving a step forward in becoming the leaders of our future. Thank you, Mr. Pata. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, ma'am. Thanks so much, Dr. Indra and I do, and all the delegates. I really enjoyed these sessions. Uh, I can say your academy is having fantastic uh, learners. 
uh, not only they performed, but they, their talent show videos has amazed me. So I'm really shocked and I'm very sure they are going to have more fruitful sessions in future. Thank you so much all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patak. A few words from Dr. Naidu, perhaps? Well, I'd like to thank our Honourable Chair for granting our school being the first on the IA Moon Junior category. This has actually inspired our kids to move further. We are getting numerous calls from parents asking us, are you going to avail this to the rest of the kids? Yes, most definitely. This experience has been a very good experience to all our learners. It has been a new concept, but it has been a great learning journey for all. Thank you for giving that to our country. Thank you for giving that to our little junior category learners. And I'm sure they will acquire it next year. Thank you, delegates. Thank you, on the show. Thank you, program coordinator. And thank you to the two most important persons behind the scenes Mr. Sebastian Frita and Mr. Luke Peter, for doing the task so effectively. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you, Dr. Naidu. I believe that concludes our award ceremony for today. Thank you, Mr. Honorable Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any learner who would like to make a contribution? The platform is open. Can you raise your hand? China, you may have your say. On behalf of all of the delegates, the delegate of China would like to thank Dr. Naidu for opening up this opportunity. Karishna Ma'am, which is the coordinator of IAUN, for exposing us to that. And Mr. Gopal Krishna Pata for helping us get through and teaching us a lot of things. Thank you for this opportunity to let me be here in IAMUN. I have learned a lot from this experience to cooperate with other countries and other delegates and to learn about natural environmental issues of other countries and how they find resolutions. I have learned a lot from the world around me. And I hope to participate in, in many IAMEN programs in future years. And also a big shout out to Mr. Lois Venter for helping us. Thank you. Thank you, Delegate of China, for those kind words. Any other delegates would like to have a say? Can you raise your hands? The platform is open. Delegate of Sweden? Delegate of Sweden would like to say a few words. Proceed, Delegate of Sweden. I would like to thank Mr. Patak, Karishma Ma'am, and Dr. Naidu for this amazing opportunity that you have given us. I've learned a lot on IAMUN. Thank you so much. Thank you, Delegate of Sweden. Delegate of Sweden is, in fact, one of our younger delegates in this session. Thank you, Delegate of Sweden. Delegate of New Zealand? Delegate of New Zealand would like to say a few words. Proceed, proceed. Thank you so much to Dr. Nairu, to Karish Mamiyam, to Mr. Patak for this amazing opportunity. I'm pretty sure Delegate of China has said a lot and Sweden, but this opportunity of learning about new countries, improving our general knowledge, learning about each country individually and the environmental issues was a really good chance to spend our holiday. Thank you so much, Mr. Patak, for your time and for your effort to be on this platform every day at 10 p.m. We really appreciate it from all these delegates. Thank you so much, Dr. Naidu, for arranging this opportunity for us. This online platform with Louis Spencer always being available if we have any technical problems. Thank you so much, Krishna Myung, for all your effort and for assisting and guiding us whenever we were confused and lost. Thank you to all these delegates who actually stayed on this platform and took part in this amazing opportunity. I'm pretty sure that all of us really enjoyed it. Thank you once again. Thank you, delegate of New Zealand, for those kind words. We really appreciate it. Thank you everyone once again for showing such enthusiasm, giving out time from your holidays to be part of this activity. And it seems like you all have actually enjoyed it and will be participating in many more moons to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.